Today we are going to be discussing all of the guitars that John Mayer has been using, so far at least, for Dead & Company's residency at the Sphere in Las Vegas. I've already made a video discussing the amplifier, so go give that video a watch as well if you haven't seen that already after you're done watching this one on the guitars. But just diving right into everything here, the very first guitar that was just a total lock for the performances at the Sphere is the dead spec version of the PRS Silver Sky. Of course, this now is kind of just John's main dead and company guitar, especially for single coil sounds at the very least. This is really what John's been primarily using. Of course, the Silver Sky had kind of found its way into the whole dead and company sound. And then eventually John just started modifying a Silver Sky to kind of be that Jerry Garcia alligator sort of thing, just to kind of cover that sound a little bit more. That's just what he was going for, at least at the time he designed the Dead Spec Silver Sky and then released it as a model limited edition version of the Silver Sky that a lot of you guys I know have. But of course, we just knew this guitar would come out and it's just really cool to see how Dead & Company's overall history has evolved and now you're seeing John actually making a custom version of the Silver Sky for Dead & Company. It's pretty special and it's pretty unique and very, very cool. So of course, that was kind of the lock-in and this guitar really has been used for the bulk of the songs that you'd see them performing with Dead & Company. This is kind of the main Dead & Company guitar now. Now the Dead Spec Silver Sky isn't the only guitar with single coils in it that we've seen in John's hands for these performances. John has actually been using one of Jeff Beck's Strats and it's a Fender Custom Shop Jeff Beck Stratocaster either team built or master belt but the guitar actually used to belong to Jeff Beck before his unfortunate passing, and now it's in John's hands for Dead & Company shows at the Sphere. Certainly the biggest wild card out of any guitar that we could have seen probably in John's hands. I don't think any of us really expected at this point in kind of John's gear, kind of where he's at with everything, to see a Fender Strat in his hands for Dead & Company performances. It's kind of a little bit out of left field, and I don't think any of us expected it. Now, because the Dead Spec Silver Sky is Converted into a hardtail, John's been using the Jeff Beck Strat for a lot of the songs that require the use of a trem with single coils. So that's what the Jeff Beck Strat is doing. Of course, he could have just used a standard PRS Silver Sky, but very, very cool that instead of that option, he's using one of Jeff Beck's guitars, and I just think it's awesome. I've made a whole video just dedicated to this guitar and kind of the craziness of John using it. So that's another video for you guys to check out on the channel if you haven't already. <laughs> Alright, it's at this point here we are leaving those single coil guitars behind and moving along to a different style of guitar. This one really being a kind of newer fan favorite amongst a lot of us John Mayer fans, and it's John's Platinum Pearl Metallic PRS McCarty 594. This guitar is truly special in John's hands. I know a lot of us associate it with Edge of Desire, kind of in John's main career when he tours a lot now. This guitar is most oftenly seen performing 
Edge of Desire, and some other songs that require humbuckers, but this guitar is just it's now a John Mayer staple, really, at this point. I mean, just look at it. The finish is absolutely incredible. It's a gorgeous-looking guitar. And one kind of quote here in regards to the pickups that I always like to bring up when we discuss this guitar is that it doesn't have standard PRS pickups in it. This is one of those cases where we know, for a fact, that it has very unique pickups in it that were designed for John. Now, they're essentially between the 5815 and the 5815LTs. They're not quite as hot as the standard 5815s, but hotter than the LT versions, and they are the 5815JM pickups in it. So you can't get these pickups, unfortunately, at least right now. I'd love for PRS to make a signature McCarty 594 John Mayer version with those pickups in it. I think it'd be really sweet eventually, maybe down the road, but for now, we can't get these pickups and, you know, just, we just can't get them. So just keep that in mind if you're willing to buy a McCarty 594 to kind of do the John Mayer thing here. You're either going to go with the hotter version or the LTs, which are a little bit less hot. I personally probably do the LTs at that point because you can kind of more easily compensate with a little bit less hot pickups than ones that are too hot. But this guitar, absolutely phenomenal. And it's just, yeah, a fan favorite at this point. <laughs> All right, now our next guitar is one guitar that I'd honestly forgotten about. John has brought out so many various PRS private stock guitars over the years, especially with Dead & Company, as I think he was trying to get the feel for kind of what guitar he really wanted. And you'd see a guitar come out maybe for part of a tour, a stint with Dead & Company, and then it would go back into the vault. Really never to be seen again, but this guitar we did see back during Dead & Company's summer 2016 run, and now it's back for some performances with the sphere kind of residency that they're doing, and it's a PRS McCarty Private Stock Collection Series IX Curly Edition. Yes, I have the spec sheet and everything up here that you guys are looking at right now too. This guitar is absolutely crazy. I mean, look at it. The finish is incredible with the gold hardware, everything. Blue is my favorite color. It just looks absolutely ridiculous. Now, kind of the interesting details with this guitar is that for this collection series, PRS made 15 kind of figured curly kind of flame top guitars, and then they made 15 quilted maple top guitars, and John is obviously using one of the 15 curly edition versions. And from the footage you guys will be seeing on your screen now, we can see John using this guitar back in 2016, and it's very interesting that this guitar that really wasn't used that much in 2016 was the one that kind of came out of the vault again to be used for the Sphere. Now, I think it's kind of a similar thing to the Jeff Beck Strat that we've seen John using where the dead spec is a hardtail. So then he has the Jeff Beck Strat with a trim bar on it. The PRS McCarty 594, that platinum version, that is a hardtail. And now John has this again to use a guitar with trim, but this time to cover the humbucker sounds. So I think it's kind of a dual purpose here we're see seeing for the Sphere where John's being very kind of selective in the guitars he's using and their unique purposes for the songs that they're required to be used for. <laughs> And 
while that is my leading theory as to at least primarily why John is using this private stock IX curly guitar, the only footage I've been able to find, and I've spent probably a lot longer than I should have trying to find footage from the sphere of John using this guitar, you can see that it doesn't actually have the trim bar installed in it. And if you guys have been to these shows and seen John using this guitar, let us know in the comments down below if he's actually been using it with the trim bar and the performance that you might have seen with it, because that'll help kind of answer this theory. But obviously, kind of the other side to this is, is that the guitar might just be feeling really nice and different in John's hands and the pickups in this guitar back to its specs are the 5815 so you're getting a bit of a hotter pickup in it than from the standard platinum you know metallic silver finish 594 that we know John's using plus then with the actual trem bridge system in it versus hardtail you obviously will get just a bit of a different feel as well between the two guitars there so those are other likely reasons as well but just where my head goes is that okay if he's going to be using any humbucker guitars with a trim system this guitar obviously can cover those sounds but again i've only seen footage of just john using it in this capacity without a trim bar so i just gotta cover that as well that there's obviously other differences that john will be liking this guitar for as well so if you guys have seen john using it with the trim bar let us know in the comments down below because i'd like to know if that theory is correct or not <music> Now, as I mentioned, I have the spec sheet of this guitar up in front of me and you guys will be seeing it on your screen right now as well. So if you want to pause the video and kind of read through the specs of this guitar, feel free to. But really cool that we're seeing John use a very unique kind of guitar from the private stock with Dead & Company. It's just really crazy. It looks incredible and sounds obviously really good in John's hands too. And it'd be kind of neat to see John using a few different private stock guitars just for different performances. I think to just to change it up a little bit would be kind of cool. I definitely am someone who misses back in the day when John would be playing Fender Stratocasters, you know, the Continuum era, the Battle Studies era, the trio, where for different songs, he'd be changing strats all the time changing just guitars all the time and it just made things just in my opinion a little bit more special because you're seeing you know that each guitar has its own characteristics it feels different it sounds slightly different and you know whether it's the gold leaf the monterey the black one the 64 the sonic blue whatever it is they all had just those unique characteristics like John was very purposeful in swapping guitars out. And it could be the same thing eventually maybe with some different kind of private stock PRS guitars for humbucker sounds. You never know. It's just me, you know, where my where my brain goes with this kind of stuff and just seeing different guitars in John's hands, I always think is very interesting and really cool. And I think it means too, he's having fun with going to the vault and picking a guitar that's obviously a very great one. And thinking, you know what, I haven't played this one in a while. Maybe I'll give this one a shot for a few performances or for a portion of this residency. I just think it's cool and it means John's having fun. That's how I interpret it anyways. And as far as the guitars are concerned, at least, that's really it. That's what we've seen so far for the Sphere Residency. Like I said earlier on in the video, I think John's being very purposeful with his guitar choice. The Dead Spec, obviously, covering just the main bulk of the single coil sounds. The Jeff Beck Strat for when he needs a trim bar and single coils. Then the Silver Platinum Finish McCarty 594. That's the bulk of the humbucker tones. And then the Curly Private Stock Guitar. That guitar is being used for humbucker tones with a trim bar. So you're kind of seeing the kind of four bases is covered, but nothing really beyond that, at least at this point. But at this point into the residency at the Sphere, I don't really see John going that kind of crazy or throwing any other curveballs into the mix at this point. I think he's sounding great. Obviously, the guitars are working for him. Why change it up at this point here? So now at this point on the channel, we've covered the Jeff Beck Stratocaster in a lot more detail than I did in this video. We've gone over the amplifiers, at least so far, and kind of the whole deal with everything being mic'd. There is some new information that we have directly from John in terms of how he's actually kind of running everything and the situation with the speakers and the cabs at the Sphere. So we'll make a video covering that for you guys as well. There are shots of John's pedal board that's been going around for, I think a week now, I wanna say. Yeah, a week now as of the today, the day I'm right, we're making this video for you guys. I don't wanna cover it yet. Number one, I wanna wait for better shots of the pedal board. 
if we ever do get them. I'm even surprised that pictures of John's board as it is have come out. You know, I didn't really expect that to happen, but they have. And number two, I don't know. There's a balance that I feel of respecting John's kind of wishes to keep some of his gear a little bit more hidden and, you know, informing you guys. And I'm kind of at the point, and I've been at the point for a while, where with the Sawbrock tour, for example, I didn't make a video covering his pedalboard until the tour had concluded. I had a full dental and shot of that Sawbrock pedalboard before everything was blacked out, literally right after the Palladium show ended. But I never made a single video on it until the end of the Sawbrock tour because I wanted to balance informing you guys and respecting John's privacy. And it really just is for me the same thing with the Sphere residency at this point here. I'll make a video discussing the pedal board. Hopefully we do get those better shots. But at this point here, I'm having fun talking about the guitars, the amps, and kind of some information that's not really quite as, you know, I'm not really diving in that aggressively on the whole situation and analyzing to that degree the gear that John's using. I just want to kind of have fun. And I don't know. It just, it never kind of feels right in my opinion just to, you know, John's trying to hide a few things and just immediately go out there and just be like, boom, here's exactly what he's using. We know right away. I don't know. I just, I want to do my best to respect John and what he's doing. So that's why if you guys are wondering why when there's talk about the pedal board, I haven't discussed it on the channel yet. That's why. That's just my personal kind of stance on everything. Later on during the kind of residency, I'll make a video on it. But for right now, just kind of holding off. So I hope you guys can understand and get where I'm personally kind of coming from, at least. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Really fun just discussing some of these really cool guitars with you guys and just having John on stage again. Always a great time to be talking about it with you guys on the channel. Take care, everyone. We'll see you on the next video.